And welcome to St. Stephen's Kids Online. I'm Kate, and I'm so glad you joined me this week. We've been in the middle of a summer series for Sunday School called Creative with God. We've been talking with friends from our St. Stephen's family about how they are creative and connect with God in unique ways. And we've been trying it out especially connecting with God and his beautiful creation outside this summer. I hope you've been having fun because I certainly have. Last week we were talking about yoga and how God made our whole bodies and we can use our bodies in creative ways and just enjoy him and remember that we are his precious creation. Today we're going to talk with someone else that uses pottery to do something very similar and remember that we are God's creation. Are you ready to meet him? Let's go. Hi friends. I'm here with another of my friend from St. Stephen's. You may not recognize him, but this is Pastor Rob. Believe it or not, Pastors are not always standing behind the pulpit in a church. <laughs> they do have lives. Um, they have homes and they even do other things for fun. So Pastor Rob is here to talk about one of the things that he enjoys as a hobby, the art of pottery making. So thank you, Pastor Rob, for being with us today. Sure, Kate, and uh, greetings to all the boys and girls. It's great to be here with you, Kate, and with them. Uh, through this video. So before we really get into the nitty gritty, we kind of need to know what is the art of pottery making? Well, the art of pottery making is uh, not just, you know, an art, but it's, it's a, a functional thing. And so particularly in the time of the Bible, it, you know, everybody uh, didn't have plastic things uh, to plastic plates or glass plates necessarily, everything was made from pottery. And pottery is uh, clay or dirt that's uh, put together and fired in, uh, in heat and made very, very strong uh, and, and durable. And so things like plates and bowls and water pitchers and water jugs and lots and lots of things in Jesus' time were and in before that even were made with pottery. Now, uh, our time it's more of an art form uh, where we make maybe pretty pieces uh, that we want to put up on our shelves, but uh, it's certainly a, a very functional thing. So in Jesus's day, they would have used pottery uh, in every part of their life. Yes. And there were potters in every little village. Uh, and so, you know, just like we have store clerks, that when we go to the store, there's someone in the store to help us check out of the grocery store or check out of any other store. Uh, there were, would have been potters uh, in, in uh was a, a big occupation, very important. And so they were everywhere. And so when we read things in the Bible about potters and clay and God and, and us, uh, we, we can, uh, they, they would have known the importance of clay and potters at that time. Right. So nowadays there are different ways to make a, a bowl or a vessel out of clay. I think there are two major ones. Sometimes you do by hand and sometimes you can do it on a wheel. Yeah. And so, yes, you can, you can do hand building or uh, maybe we'll try a pinch pot a little bit later, but you can use your hands and just take a lump of clay and begin to mold it. The other way, and, and really my favorite way is on a potter's wheel. And you put a lump of clay down on a spinning, a plate 
and you mold the clay as it spins around using your hands and, and being able to mold it into different shapes. Would you say that making pottery is a little bit messy? Oh, it's a lot messy. Yes, <laughs> it's a lot messy. So, you know, when you go and you make uh, pottery, you don't wear your Sunday clothes. You, you get on your dirty jeans and you go and you get muddy. And it's, it's fun getting your hands in the mud and, and in the clay and getting dirty and, and then making something, though, out of that as well. Okay. So when did you get into making pottery? Well, I've wanted to do it for a long time, but about uh, 10 years ago, uh, I finally had the opportunity to uh, go and uh, learn more and go to a studio and take some classes on how to uh, uh, make ceramics or make uh, pottery pieces. And we ha I had an instructor that, that helped me get started and would help me uh, with problems that I had and give me encouragement and things like that. So about 10 years ago. And it sounds like it takes practice. This is not oh, something that you can do all of a sudden. <laughs> takes lots of practice, lots of practice. So you, the more you do it, the better you can uh, get and the, the, the bigger things that you can uh, make. So, you know, I've got some pieces here, uh, Kate and children. And, and so this is a small piece. And this is one of the first pieces that I, I made. And I, I still use this little bowl uh, in, uh, in the church. Sometimes I'll put ashes for Ash Wednesday in this bowl and use it for uh, ashes. And so, you know, you start out making a small bowl and then I've got a larger bowl as well. You know, then you, know, you can't just start out making something larger like this. Uh, you, you have to make, you gotta get better at it. You gotta practice. Right. And sometimes it's discouraging. Like I can't do that, but you keep trying. Okay. So what do you enjoy most of your time making pottery on the wheel? What was just so exciting for you? Well, I, I think that the, you, you want to know why I really wanted to get started. Uh, and so I had read things in the Bible about uh, pottery and God being the potter mm -hmm. and us as humans being the clay. The prophet Isaiah tells us that, that God is the potter and we're the clay. So what God is doing in our lives is, you know, molding and shaping us more and more uh, to be like Jesus. And so those things were uh, really inspirational, wanting to learn more about, you know, uh, how uh, God shapes and molds us and molds me and how God is continuing to work in my life. And so even from the very beginning of the Bible, there are stories that, that humans were formed from the dust of the ground, that God got down on God's uh, and knees and, and uh, put the dirt together and created a, a human and then breathed into the human uh, the breath of life. And so that's in the very beginning of the Bible, in the second chapter of Genesis even. Uh, the very, very beginning. And so I wanted to learn more about this uh, kind of relationship and how God was molding me. That was kind of, it was kind of a, uh, not just a hobby, but a, a spiritual uh, endeavor to learn more about how God was working. And then I, I really found out that I just love doing it. Uh, um, and so I've, I've tried to continue as best I can. It seems like there's a connection for you. You thought about your creator creating you, God creating you, and then you wanted to, in some ways, um, imitate and, and be creative. So God created you and you're creating other things using your hands. That's neat. Um, yeah. I know a little bit, but could you describe more about the process of how a lump of clay would get to one of those pieces that's finished? I think there are a lot of steps in there. 
Well, there are a few steps. So I've got uh, some clay that uh, I'm going to put some gloves on because as you mentioned, it, it's a little messy <laughs> and I'm uh, going to pull out some clay. And so this is a particular kind of clay. I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, called porcelain clay. And it's a very kind of fine sand, fine mud, uh, but of course it's very, very white as well. And so the first part of, of uh, working the clay, you have to knead it. Uh, and you, you wanna get all the air bubbles out. And because that's gonna be very important later that there's no air bubbles in any of your pieces. Uh, and so you need the clay and you work it and you work it and you get it soft and you get it uh, to mold and, and be ready to mold and you get it kind of in a roundish kind of shape. And then when I was working the wheel, you would plop it right down on the wheel and then you would use your hands to begin to mold it and then perhaps uh, what we call lift it, turn the shape and, and maybe you would put a a center in uh, and we would lift it. Or if we're gonna do like a pinch pot, this is a big piece of clay for a pinch pot, but we can use our thumbs and our fingers and we can turn it in, begin to turn it into a, a bowl. So you can see if I'm already starting an, uh, a, uh, a intersection. And we can just keep using our hands to mold it into the shape that we want. Does it and so that's where I was thinking pressure? about God, you know, molding us. Do you have to push on it sometimes a little bit harder and sometimes to get it to go the way you want it to go? Yeah, you, you really sometimes have to really use a lot of strength. Uh, depends on how much clay you have. And then, of course, there are other times you have to be as the maybe the, it gets thinner and thinner. You've got to be more and more delicate mm. as well. Mm. So you got to use different kinds of uh, forces uh, to, to mold the clay into the shape that you want. Mm -hmm. And then after you've kind of got your piece like you want it, and there's ways to uh, further shape it with some special tools, mm -hmm. uh, you then you let it dry. And it's very, uh, as it uh, uh, dries, it's still very, very delicate. And then you put it in a kiln. A kiln is a very uh, hot fire chamber uh, where the, uh, the pottery gets turned in from something that's uh, dry and brittle into something that is very, very hard. Now, if you don't get all the air out when you're kneading the clay as you were starting, if you didn't get all the air out, you know, what can happen is in that all that hot, hot heat, those, if you have air in your, your clay, what happens is in the heat that, ex, that air in your clay expands in your, your whole piece, your whole uh, bowl or whatever it is might explode mm. and fall into pieces. So you, that's why it's really important that you start right and, and work and work through the process and, and, and then after the bowl is finished, like I've got a finished plate, this has been fired. Uh, so it's, it's hard, but it doesn't have any color on it. Oh. Mm -hmm. And you can do different colors uh, based on what we, uh, the, the, the kinds of, uh, you can actually dip the pots into different colors and then you fire them again and the colors turn out with this nice, usually with a nice pretty shine on. Mm -hmm. Wow, a lot of steps to the process and each part is very important, it sounds like. It, yes, it <laughs> is. Each, each one is very important if you want to get something out and it takes a while. You can't just do it in one day. It takes, right. uh, you know, maybe several weeks. Uh, until you can actually see your bowl come out of the kiln uh, many weeks later. That reminds me again of what you said, that God is working on us. Um, and he's 
molding us and shaping us. And, and sometimes it's uncomfortable as we're getting challenged to become more like Jesus. But it too is a long-term process. You, even as the pastor, are still being worked on by God. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, th that uh, God is continuing to mold and to shape us, uh, mold and shape me more and more like Jesus and to be more loving and more caring for others, uh, to know more about God and, and, and to share that uh, love of God with others. And God can use us the same way you were saying, even in the beginning, that people use pottery every day. Um, and God can use us every day in the shape that he's made me. Um, in some ways, I might be a different shape than you. God made yeah. me to have a different purpose, perhaps, than you. But God can use us in whatever shape he makes us every day. Absolutely. And so I think one of the things that I've always liked to do when I've uh, uh, make uh, pottery is to experiment and to try making different shapes and all the different shapes are and use different color clay different kinds of clay mm -hmm. uh, some of the clay is is uh, uh, darker some of it is lighter all different kinds of colors different kinds of, uh, of, of uh, in products that uh, that we use uh, and they have different functions, like a coffee cup, you know, is not the same as a bowl, right? They're, but right. they're all important and all are, are, can be used. And so that's so important for us to know as, as children of God, that all of us are important to God and God has made all of us and God has made us all to be uh, uh, important to others and to be used uh, as for important things in the world but not always in the same way, right? Right, right. Um, but God has a master plan um, of what we're going to be and how he can show love to others through us. Oh, this is so exciting. Um, could you teach us a little bit of maybe how to mold? Um, I have some Play-Doh, and I know it's not exactly like clay, but maybe I could try a little bit with you. Hey, well, I think it's Play-Doh is, is very much uh, like clay. It may not be exactly the same, but it's the same kind of idea. And hey, kids, so if you, you need to, kids, if you ahead. need to stop the video and go get some Play-Doh, you can try with me and Pastor Rob, and we're going to see if we can mold and knead and think about how God is creative and you be creative with us. So stop the video and then jump on with us once you've gotten your Play-Doh. All right. So right now, I know I'm trying to squeeze it and soften it up a little bit. This is like the kneading process, you said, right? Yes. And uh, so that you get it ready so that it can be uh, shaped into something. And then, of course, you know, you got to think about, well, what do I want to do with this mm -hmm. uh, this clay or this play-doh what kind of shape do i want to turn it into yeah and so getting a good idea of what you want to work on is is really important okay and then if you're looking like I'm, I'm thinking of i'm not sure what you're thinking about uh kate but i'm thinking about just a bowl all right and so well, i'm starting to use my uh thumbs and my fingers to uh, push into the center of my lump okay. of uh, clay all right, I'm going to try. And it seems like you're spinning it around as you're pushing. Is that to make it kind of even all uh, around? Yes, I'm trying to make it a, a kind of even around so that it's a kind of a circular. I want to make a, something circular. You don't have to have a circle. It could be a, you could be thinking you want a square. Right. Uh, but I'm thinking circular. So I'm, I'm uh, doing a little bit of, uh, at a time. I'm trying to be... Uh, kind of uh, gentle so I'm not doing it too quickly mm -hmm. I'm, I want the sides to have the kind of same thickness if I can gotcha I like the feel of the play-doh on my hands it's like soft now that I've really needed it it's a nice feeling 
I don't know, my, my uh, clay is soft, but it's also kind of feels cool. Mm, yeah, yeah. And then you just use the, uh, and if you want to put uh, on the sides, you want something, you know, you want to push your little fing your finger in and, and create oh. a kind of a special side. I can like make a design of a design, yeah. Sticking in and out, in and out, yeah, like a pattern around the edge. Oh, that's neat. And since we had the conversation about, you know, God making us um, and still working on us, it's kind of fun to think about him looking at me and saying, hmm. I wonder what creative way I want to make her because um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes we forget that God has fun too. You know, God enjoys being with us and he enjoys spending time with us and he enjoys working with us. Um, so as absolutely. I'm having fun with my Play-Doh, I'm thinking, oh, God probably has fun too. Yeah. And, and God's thinking, and, and as we create a pot and we want to uh, create something that is beautiful and functional, you know, God is thinking the same thing about us. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to, uh, to uh, create something out of Pastor Rob that's uh, more beautiful and more functional, more loving, more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this has been wonderful. I've enjoyed learning all about pottery and seeing the pieces that you had to share and also talking about how this is a connection to God. Um, he's our creator and we can be creative with him. So thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing your insights and also the fun that you have um, just being creative with God. So thank you, Pastor Rob. You're very welcome. It's great being here with you and I and, uh, hope you all have fun with your pots. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, how did your pinch pot turn out? I'm still working on mine, but I certainly had a lot of fun, and I learned a lot talking with Pastor Rob, and it was nice to be reminded that God is holding us in his hands and forming us and shaping us just like I was holding the Play-Doh in my hands. Did you make one? Can you send me a picture? I would love to see it and know what fun you had being creative this week using your hands, just like God is creative with his hands. In the Bible, in the Psalms, it says in Psalm 95, the Lord is a great God. The earth's depths are in his hands. The mountain heights belong to him. The sea which he made is his, along with the dry ground which his own hands formed. It's exciting to be reminded that God had fun making the world and actually touched things with his hands when he's making them. And he made us too with his own hands. And he's still working on us, just like I'm still working on my pinch pot. I was so glad for that reminder today that I am God's special creation. And it also is fun that I can be creative just like God. He made me and you in his image. That means he made us to be like him. Oh, it's going to be a great week. And I hope you have fun playing around with Play-Doh or clay, or maybe you'll dig in the dirt in a garden or touch your hands in the sand at the beach and build a sandcastle. All of these things, these dry ground and dirt that God made can be good reminders that we are in his hands. I hope you'll send me your stories and your pictures to the email address posted below. It's so fun to hear from you. And don't forget to join us next week. We'll talk with another friend about drums. 
It's going to be a good time, and I look forward to it. And remember, God wants to spend time with you every day in every way. Why? Because he made you. You are his precious child, and he loves you so much. So go, be creative with God. I'll see you again soon. Bye.